everybody welcome to episode 216 of wool and spinning my name is Rachel I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls and I just want to welcome you to this place how are you all everybody's already chatting in the live chat uh, it's so good to see you here thank you so much for being here it is Saturday September 24th 25th 2021 how are you guys all doing how's your fall going I know you guys were talking about the weather it is beautiful here as well we've got sunny skies blue skies amazing they had originally forecasted rain so I'm feeling very thankful um, that we've got some some Sun out there our morning uh, sort of craziness <laughs> is sort of this marathon or sprint, I think is more like it, to get to sort of the live stream on Saturday mornings. Um, so Nora is home. So if you hear some kid noise or if you hear her moving around and whatnot, um, thank you for understanding. James is at soccer. Uh, it starts at, uh, he has to be on the field at 7.30. Um, on Saturday mornings this year. So it's been um, a big adjustment for him because he's never had to be on the field before 8 a.m. this um, up till this point. And as he goes up in the in the levels, this early morning will be pretty standard for him. So I think it's he's up anyways. It's just the getting going and kind of lighting a fire under his butt. So yeah, it's uh, it's been sort of the, the sprint of the morning. And then I've got, I wanted to load the instant pot because I'll be working for the rest of the weekend. Um, and I, uh, I've got, I've got nights coming up and I, <laughs> I loaded my, I posted in the Slack channel under hashtag recipes. Um, I loaded my carrot cake, carrot cake oats recipe. Um, I linked it in the, in the hashtag recipes on the Slack channel. If you're interested, I just skipped the sweetener cause I find it's just too much. It's too sweet. I don't have a sweet tooth per se. Uh, berries are sweet enough for me. So it's loaded in the instant pot and is running in the background for the next few days. Cause I need, um, when I'm at work, I pretty much like just eat oatmeal. <laughs> it's like my, my meal. I just eat oatmeal. So carrot cake oatmeal for the win. Um, we have a very full show today. I've got quite a bit to share with you. So if we get to community participation, great. And if not, we'll save it for next time. I also um, have not yet put together the vlog from our trip. Um, I haven't even downloaded it off the camera. So if we don't get to community uh, participation today, I think what I'll do is I'll edit that video and put community participation in with it. And it'll be kind of like a podcast episode and um, you guys will still get to see what I wanted to share with you today. We finished um, Spindle Spun Summer on the autumnal equinox. So we officially kind of finished uh, back on Monday. People are submitting their yardage, they're submitting their finished photos of everything that they spun. And what I was hoping we could do was sort of pivot into an ongoing spin along where it would be spindle spun sweater spin so it's you don't have to make a sweater it's just a garment you could do a cowl you could do um, whatever you want but it just kind of keeps our spindle momentum going and then I thought what we could do is sort of spindle spun summer is sort of over but I think we could come up with a fun you know play on words you know spindle spun something um, that we could kind of keep going indefinitely and then we'll sort of resurrect spindle spun summer next summer uh, so yardage for spindle spun is, um, please get that submitted. So the link is here in the live chat. I have also put it into the show notes for this week, which are available at patreon.com slash wool and spinning. And that's also how you are able to access the live stream every week is by joining the Patreon. And, um, so if you could submit your yardage and any photos that you have, you can throw into the Spindle Spun Summer 
chatter thread. Um, I think that we are going to sort of have um, some prizes drawn from both the finished yardage and from the thread uh, because I think people were submitting in both places. So um, yeah, we'll kind of figure that out. I've got some prizes to, to send out. I've got a couple of spindles from very generous people from Diana and from Mars. I've got some uh, Rolag sets that I'm gonna that I'll include that I've made. Um, yeah, we've got probably about four prizes, maybe five. So that's really really wonderful. So thank you to those who donated prizes. Yeah, and we'll keep the spindle spinning going. I know um, Angela, she's been spinning. She posted a great video on her YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to post it actually, because I see that you're here, Ange, um, about support spindling and kind of getting her getting herself going and some of the tips and tricks that she had for getting her support spindles going. I'll talk a little bit about my support spindling journey and what's happened to me this week. It's been very eventful. So I will share that with you guys. And um, I also will share, uh, we'll get on the wheel and we'll spin up this beautiful Jacob. This is the second to last wool that's part of the sheep breeds kit from the school of sweet georgia from my new workshop spinning sheep breeds so we'll spin that today and then we're going to save one of my favorites for last we actually ended up saving three of my favorites for the end of the spinning sheep breeds kind of you know sort of section so we did chevy it earlier which is one of my favorites but now we've got three back to back of my favorites so last week was shetland i have not finished the yarn i'll tell you why and then we have Jacob, which is one of my absolute most favorites. And then we have Icelandic. So uh, I w went to the fleece auction um, a couple of weekends ago with, um, and I met up with my friend Elizabeth there. And we, I wasn't going to buy any fleece and I didn't technically buy any fleece, although I do owe Elizabeth money. Um, <laughs> we bought a Shetland fleece and an Icelandic. So we're going to get those washed and we'll split them together, which is really fun. So uh, Diana said she loves seeing everyone's spindles and yarn, especially the discussion about spindles and how they perform. I think that was one of the things that came out of Spindle Spun Summer that I wasn't expecting was not only how many people in our community spin on spindles, how many people have made it a real study of spinning on their spindles and how many people really um, embrace uh, embraced kind of coming back to their spindles and the simplicity of spindles, which is really cool. Um, yes, you're, you guys are, you know me, they're all my favorites. You're right. But my absolute most, most favorite wools, if I could only pick, um, one class of wools to work with for the rest of my life, it would be the primitives. So if I was like, if I had a gun to my head and I couldn't do, I had to pick a class, it would be, uh, the primitives. They are my absolute most favorite. And part of it is because if you want to work with double coated and you want the experience and the um, challenge of working with double coated, you can go straight to the Icelandic tops, which are generally a blend of tog and thel. Um, and you also have an infinite number of possibilities. If you have an Icelandic fleece, you can separate it from the tog and the thel. You can spin them separately. You can blend them, card them together. There's just so many options. Um, Shetland is just like, let's face it, it's, it's, just amazing color work yarn and sweater yarn. Jacob is kind of, you know, in the middle. It's a little teeny, 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 tiny bit toothier. It often now it, for hand spinners is becoming softer and softer. It's bouncy. It's got that downy quality to it. Um, it's, I just love the primitives, but I do love like all the things you guys know that. All right, and then the other thing that I wanted to share with you today was some progress on my OHS Unit 1 Master, Master Weaver um, stuff. So we'll chat about that. We won't go on and on just because not everybody here is a weaver and not everybody here is working on their um, Master Weaver uh, and not working on their Unit 1. But I wanted to share it because there's been a lot of chatter in the community about this. And so I just wanted to, uh, you know, show you guys what I've started with and, and some of the roadblocks that I've had with getting going. Uh, just so that people are really uh, realistic and understanding about what they're getting into if they're kind of thinking about it and um, thinking about time frames and the amount of time that's that's needed for a study like this. Um, it, it just keeps the conversation going and keeps it in the open so that you guys really know kind of what to expect if you're going to sign up and start to pay for the unit modules and um, the virtual uh, group. I'll explain all of that in a minute. And then, and then, like I said, we'll try and get to community participation. So I'll see you on the other side.
All right. So what should we start with? Um, let's talk about my week. <laughs> so I have not finished the Shetland uh, because I, I have, however, the wool circle on Tuesday, we were at the wheel. Uh, so the wool circle is one of the live streams that happens twice a month on wool and spinning. It's part of the Patreon tiers. Um, and we get on the wheel and we talk about sampling and we talk about, um, spinning different things. And this past year has been very heavy in spinning all of the luxury fibers. So, um, this past episode, um, it was episode 50 already. Holy smokes. And you have access. If you sign up for that tier, you have access to all the back episodes. Um, we were spinning this absolutely beautiful 50, 50 wool silk in the Casbah colorway from Sanjo silk. This is part of the exotics spin box, which is available on the, uh, Sanjo silk website. And if you're a Patreon patron, of wool and spinning up until October 1st, there is a discount code. So, sorry, my hair is in my eyes. Um, so there's a discount code that is in the Patreon posts associated with like in the feed, you'll find it. It's not too, too far back um, for a discount code for the exotics spin box and for any other spinning fiber that you wanna order. So we were spinning this. Um, this is on my very fast flyer on the Lendrum and um, everything was going tickety-boo and, and I was able to get this done and it spun up just absolutely beautifully. And that evening, Nora had soccer. That was Tuesday. Nora had soccer. And oh, that morning I had cut my uh, thumb really badly on my kitchen knife, which is incredibly sharp. And I was spinning away Monday night. This is Monday night. Sorry, you guys. I've been spinning away on my um, support spindles and really, oh, really enjoying it. Like really enjoying it. So this, um, I'll show you guys these. Um, and I was spinning away on Monday night uh, while James was at soccer. I spun for the almost the entire hour. And I wasn't, I had been spinning lots and lots on this one. Um, I, I had started this last weekend and I had been using my support spindles when we were away on our trip. I had had no problems whatsoever. And um, one flick, one flick on my carry, this is my, my carry cherry, cherry, carry, carry, cherry. How do you say that, Diana? It's all twisted because I, I basically left this when this happened. I, I haven't worked on it since. So this is my carry cherry. I was put it in front of my face so it'll, it'll uh, focus. I did one flick and it was just at the right angle and with the right speed and with the right sort of tension on my thumb that I sprained my muscle down here in my thumb. It was so sore. So Thursday, Tuesday wasn't too bad and I could still, I did the demo for, for wool and spinning. I didn't have a lot of pain. It wasn't uncomfortable. I could spin no problem. And then virtual spin group that later that morning, um, it was achy, but it was sort of okay. And I can't remember what I was working on for virtual spin group. I feel like I wasn't really working on very much of anything. I remember that we had a really good time. Oh no, we didn't have virtual spin group because Nora had to go for a, um, she had a dental appointment. We moved virtual spin group to Wednesday. That's what it was. And, uh, so Nora had to have a CT scan this week. Sorry, my, my bangs are right in my eyes. I'm just going to fix them so that they stop bugging me. Um, Nora had to go for a CT scan on Thursday because of her whole lower jaw, because she's got to have, she needs to have surgery. She's got some, um, for those who are dentists out there, she has odontomas sitting in her lower jaw down here, blocking her adult teeth from coming through. So she has to have surgery. So she had her CT scan, she had her dental appointment on Tuesday morning, and my my thumb was sore, but it wasn't like, and then by Tuesday night, I was in so much pain, and I came home from Guild. I actually left early, it was hurting so badly. I left early and I iced it, all day Wednesday, it was aching and sore and hurting so badly. Um, the virtual spin group, we kind of had a quiet and all through here, you could actually see on the back of my hand, it was all swollen. And so it was just that one flick at the one angle in the wrong direction, um, like, like direction for your thumb to move that it just undid me. So I basically haven't done anything for the rest of the week. 
but I have been working on my Jacob spins and for the first time this is um, this is my oh my goodness what is this spindle called um, it is from um, it's not Carrie Cherry it's and I don't have my sheet right here for it um, somebody in the group I know Diana has a couple of them and I know that Josephine has a couple of these spindles shoot what's the company what's the name she makes them anyhow um, this one is just beautiful and it's almost done um the the jacob my jacob study so what we'll be doing in november for the content is actually looking at spinning our breed and color study this is all breed and color study uh on support spindles which is really great and i am happy to say that with four days of rest my thumb is told is like 99 percent better i'm going to rest it through the weekend and give it just until next week and then i'll give it a try so what I've been doing in the meantime, silly salmon. Thank you guys. Silly salmon. This is a silly salmon. Silly salmon. It is absolutely beautiful. It's inverted something or other. Um, if I had my sheet, I would be able to tell you, but I really love this spindle. And so what I've been doing in the meantime is winding plying balls. So this is some um, Corydale Merino that I have made into Rolex years ago when it was sitting in my stash. I had spun it on support spindles on my little turbo, my little hound design turbo, and on just playing around with my Nitty Naughty UK to be Tibetan spindles. And I had finished it off, and so I wound it off onto onto um, into a plying ball to get that plied, but I didn't dare try to ply it because of my thumb. And um, what, what I found with the Jacob, because I spun all of this Jacob while we were away, uh, on spindles. I did some of this on support, some of this on drop. I I feel like it's um, just a really, really wonderful way to spin Jacob. Um, it, it, I, I, when I've spun Jacob in, in the past, I've often found that I've accidentally overspun it. And we'll talk about that at the wheel now. And I find that I end up with either too much twist in it or it's under twisted in the singles. And when I first started trying Jacob, um, when I first started spinning, it was one of those wools that I was really drawn to at the beginning. And I ended up spinning a whole bunch of it. I think it was like two, two or 300 grams. And I went to wash and it was really, really underspun in hindsight. And I tried to find this game, but I couldn't find it to show you guys. And um, the, the yarn was quite underspun, very low twist, low, low twist singles, low twist ply. It was spun on my Kromsky Minstrel, my first one, and uh, before I sold that wheel. And yes, I have another one now. And um, I, when I've looked at that yarn since, it's one of those kind of accidental genius moments when you're learning how to spin, when you go back to try to create that yarn again. And you can't because it's so low twist that as a more experienced spinner, you know that the singles aren't um, basically structurally sound. So you compensate and you add more twist. But as a beginner, you just let it go onto the bobbin and you're sort of like, you don't know what you don't know. And then when I went to ply, it was constantly breaking. But what ended up happening was when I plied it, it sort of made it and structurally sound enough to get it into skein form and get it washed. And then the hot, hot, hot water, because I didn't know any better at the time. I used to full almost all of my skeins. So I hot, cold, hot, cold. I didn't know you weren't supposed to do it for everything. Created a slightly fulled, structurally stable two-ply yarn that was incredibly low twist. Um, and the funny thing is, is that it ended up being like a really, really great yarn. But to recreate that as a more experienced spinner would actually be very difficult because letting those... Uh, very just unbelievably low twist singles onto the wheel without fixing them or without uh, subconsciously adding more twist would actually be very difficult. You guys have some questions, comments. You said earlier that the Patreon dis the San Joe Patreon discount is for the spin box or anything else in the store. No, it's only for the most. No, you're right, Dorothy. It's only for the most recent spin box and spinning fiber. 
um, you can apply it to spinning fiber because um, Diana emailed me and said that that was the case. So not for the old spin box and not for other yarn, but you can apply it to spinning fiber. Um, I did get the same thickness of singles on the variety of spindles. Um, that was one of the things that as I was winding this plying ball, this is about 100 grams of, of yarn. It is 100 grams of yarn actually because I did finish what I had forgotten. Um, I got that, I, I finished off that, um, remember how I had found that fiber that was, wasn't spun? I thought it was done, but it wasn't. So I finished that off before I hurt my thumb. And this is 100 grams. And I was really surprised as I was winding the plying ball how even my singles were um, and how they appear quite even in twist as well. So I'll have to see when I go to actually ply this. I didn't dare do it this week because of my thumb. Um, I was really kind of surprised as I was winding it how um, even it appeared to be. So it'll be interesting to look at the skein later and sort of do a reflection of what that looks like. Um, Stephanie Gustad wrote about this in Apply, in, in Ply Magazine. She calls it ghost yarn. But if you can get it onto the spindle and it will survive taking it off, you can get a lovely soft yarn. Yes, yes, I remember reading that. That's right. Um, ghost yarn, is that what they call it? I'd forgotten about that. Um, also, welcome, Dorothy. I feel like I haven't seen you forever. Um, it's been, it feels like a long time. <laughs> So it's good to see you. Um, I Whenever we have some time away and we're like away, I always come back feeling like I haven't seen people and which is pretty normal. And then um, if it's another couple of weeks, then you really start to feel like you haven't seen people. So my best friend, she unfortunately was in a car accident this past week. So lots of prayers of healing for her. Um, her name is Amber for those who would like to pray for her because um, she's, she's, not feeling great. Um, it was not her fault. Uh, I haven't seen her now for over a month. Like we talk and we text almost every day, but it's like, it's weird not to actually physically see her and not to see the kids. So yeah, that's what she calls it. It describes, yeah, you're right. Diana it describes it so, so well. Is there any content already posted about how to make a ball off of a spindle? I'm new to spindles and get got inspired by spindle spun summer. That's awesome, Sarah. Um, I'm not sure that there's any per se. Uh, there is a lot of tips and pointers and whatnot in the Slack channel from people. Like there are definitely people that will help you for sure. Um, I will have a look later and I'll, I'll, I'll see if there's anything. So let's turn to the wheel. And I, while we were talking, I was dividing up this Jacob. So this is all it here. This is the other half of the two ounce braid that we have access to spin. And if anybody is going to be at Knit City next weekend, um, Katrina will have, Judy has made a whole bunch of these spinning aprons. This is one of the main major questions that I get um, about um, when, I'm, when I'm wearing my spinning apron on the podcast. Um, Judy's been making a whole bunch of them and they will be at Knit City for those who will be there next weekend. And I have bought tickets for this Saturday afternoon. So, and also for Sunday morning, but I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to go back on Sunday morning. I'm just, I'm just going to see how the weekend goes. Um, so if you are planning to go <clears throat> on Saturday afternoon, uh, please don't be a stranger. Please come and say hello. And uh, if you see me on Sunday morning again, please come and say hello and don't be a stranger. Um, so this is the Jacob, like I said, and I decide I just pre-drafted, um, down the length of this, uh, top. This is just absolutely beautifully prepared and it's just absolutely parallel. It's just like the Shetland from last week. It's just beautiful. So I set up my Lendrum on my favorite ratio, which is 17 to one. And we're just going to kind of start off and see what we end up with. So like I said, one of the things with Jacob that I often find is that I over spin it when I'm on the wheel. So actually because of that, I'm going to go, I'm going to go down to 12 because I can already feel that it's overspun. When I feel the twist pushing against my drafting fingers, I, I generally will back off. I often, I'll, I kind of know that that's the twist is building up a bit too much. 
and the uh, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit too much twist this is actually hurting my thumb that I cut the other day so I'm just going to change how I'm drafting slightly uh, I don't think that I can change my drafting hand to my right hand and actually switch but it's um, pushing on where I cut the tip of my thumb off not to be graphic but it's true so we're just going to try to sort of put a little bit less twist in this and see what we end up with. I could have grabbed my standard flyer for this instead of my fast flyer. This is not the very fast flyer. That actually is a phys it's a different head and it's a different bobbin. It looks physically different. I actually, to wind the plying ball for the Corriedale uh, Merino, I actually put it in my basket here. This is kind of my basket that I keep a lot of my stuff in, and it actually worked really well to wind them off because I'm constantly asking Mike to, um, <clears throat> uh, to, to hold the spindles while I wind them off. And sometimes, depending on the amount of singles on it, it's really, really significant. So... I think because I can't feel like I normally would on the tip of my thumb here because of the injury, I'm actually naturally grabbing more fibers because I'm actually not, like it's it's not super comfortable. It hurts actually. Um, so let's see what our plyback test looks like because I think this yarn is um, maybe, oh, it is quite even. Oh, there you go. I'm actually quite surprised. I thought that it was going to be really super inconsistent because I'm, I'm having trouble feeling um, where my injury is. So let's just see what this looks like. This isn't ghost yarn. This isn't like, you know, true ghost yarn where like it's really super low twist, but you can definitely see it's going to come out. It's, it's low twist angle. It's going to come out a little bit. Um, uh, it'll, it won't poof a ton, but it'll kind of fill in those spaces and lots and lots of air, a little bit low, lower twist, very gently spun. Now, if you overspin, I'll show you the difference. If you overspin Jacob, it just ends up ropey. It, it ends up, it doesn't need tons and tons and tons of twist. So let's put in, I'll just put in a ton of twist here. This is why I like spinning some of these breeds on the spindles because this, the, the, the dropping motion of the spindle lengthens the fibers out and it pulls them. And then when you go to, and you, you know, you, you put enough twist to make a structurally sound singles. Yeah, see that doesn't even have enough twist. I'm compensating because I can feel that it's got too much twist. So I could, I was moving my fingers faster. I don't know if you guys noticed that to make a, um, a lower twist yarn because the, the fiber just resists all of that additional twist. Um, it just doesn't need it. And it, it makes it really ropey and really wiry. So this is like, like this is wire. So check that out really, really wiry and ropey. And yet last week with our Shetland, a yarn like that was just a phenomenal sweater yarn, but this week in the Jacob, it feels really wiry and it's almost kind of stiff. See how it's kind of stiff? That is yet wiry yarn. And then next to, look at that Jacob, it's just, you know, down below, just really soft and airy. And you could, if you were concerned about that yarn, you could just fold it a little bit, put it in hotter water. Uh, when you're washing and finishing, maybe put some eucalyn in and then go back and forth between hot and cold if you were concerned about you know, wear and tear. But I think this would just be just an awesome yarn. But this is wiry and ropey. I'm not even sure. I, it, I mean, I guess weaving maybe. This reminds me of the yarn that I'm working with for, the, um, for my unit one. Very, very, very uh, wooly wool. Very coarse. And... Uh, almost kind of unpleasant um, but you know it's turning out that yarn is turning out to be really kind of amazing for what I'm thinking in the back of my mind might be long term uh, a project uh, for a woven coat uh, Diana and I had talked about it years ago doing a, a woven coat and 
it actually kind of lit a fire under me and kind of made me feel like, oh, options. Because <clears throat> my, you guys know that my long-term plan has always been to weave yardage for a big project and, um, you know, that I would like to sew with my yarn, with, with my fabrics. And um, it, just the idea of making a coat when she suggested that, I it just, oh, amazing. Let's see, I don't, oh, you guys are helping with the, uh, um, that's wonderful, with the uh, uh, spindle spun, with the uh, supported spindles issue. Best, oh, thank you, Linda. So best video I found on making a plying ball is in Rachel's YouTube very early videos. Um, it's in the teaching videos. I know exactly the one that you're talking about, Linda, and I think that that one, I'd actually forgotten about it, to be honest. I think that that one I had done for, I feel like I did it for Sweet Georgia originally, but it's in my 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 stuff. Um, I, I'll find that and link to it, because actually I don't want to spend the time looking for it now. Um, so that's great. Um, we had... Um, a maker morning this past Thursday too and it was so good to see people and to meet some people that hadn't been able to come before so Alberto just popped up in the chat and he was able to be there although he was at work so he was muted um, it was really really good he said he accidentally did zero to hero uh, with his Jacob fleece he's he had gotten some fleece amount unknown and and now and spun it up that's great um, you knitted a hat. That's wonderful. Hi, Rebecca. Good to see you. Hi, Alice. Good to see you. First time with us. Welcome. Alice was, uh, it was also her first maker morning. So it was so good to meet her. So let's talk about my unit one, uh, OHS unit one. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to do this is. It's probably just for me to show you and lift things up. Um, so I finished my tabby samples. So for the Ontario Hand Weavers and Spinners um, Master Weaver program, they tell you for Unit 1 what your warp is going to be and how many ends to uh, warp up, what the threading will be, and they give you an option of a whole bunch of different yarns to use and then you need to buy some different colors. I've actually just ordered some more colors because for my color effect, uh, I'm now on to the sort of the... Um, there's, there's three parts to unit one. There's your samples, and then there's some original samples, and then there's your actual project. And I have an idea for my project, and so I would I needed some different colors. So this is my tabby. This has already been washed. I'm gonna have to press it again because it's been kind of manhandled quite a bit. My mom and I need to get my the serger up and running so that I can I can serge these and get, get these actually finished. But this is the tabby section. And then it goes into the basket weave, uh, which is this section here. I actually was very surprised by basket weave. I, I was really surprised at how much I liked it, um, how it turned out, and uh, just really, really, I loved it in the uh, broken twill section. I just thought, you know, it just looked awesome with the two by two. Um, I really, really, really liked it. And then, because you've got three different threadings, so your blue is where you're watching the pattern, and then you're watching the other two, the yellow and the red, uh, on different threadings. So this is a point twill, this is broken. And then you, I moved into my stripe repeat, and then into basket rib, which was really surprising to me. Erica of Weevolution, her and I were talking about it on the Slack channel. It was really surprising to me. And in a different color, because of course you, you want contrast because you need to be able to see the, the differences. Um, I was really surprised. And this is it on the back. Um, it was really surprising to me. Um, I really, really, really liked it. I, I was surprised how much I liked it. Does that make sense? Um, as I was weaving it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of weft. Um, that you're seeing because of course I was watching that light green but uh, when you look at it on the on the wrong side and, and you look at sort of just the color play um, really really surprising I really liked it and that was also one of the ones where it didn't matter which threading you were on it was all the same which I thought was really interesting um, the only difference is over here you're uh, taking it over a, a, a long a longer period like a longer distance you're going over five uh, I think it's five warp threads instead of just uh, three 
So super interesting. And then I re-slayed, I cut that off and I re-slayed it for 12. And I re-slayed at two thirds my wraps per inch, which is 20 wraps per inch for this yarn. This is Briggs and Little Sport. It's a singles yarn. And I re-slayed it and two thirds is about 13. And so I, and it's just so stiff. Like it's just, um, I, I could feel it as I was weaving. It just, it, it wasn't working. Um, it was just way, way, way too stiff. And I, I, I didn't like the fabric. It was like, I could even see it on the loom. It was too stiff. So I cut that off. And I re-slayed at 12. So just going down by that one end per inch completely changed the fabric. It's just amazing to me how much difference you get when you change just by one end. So this is a little bit damp. The kids had, they were playing yesterday. They were, oh, they were just being amazing. Uh, there was a pro D with the public schools yesterday. And so all of the neighborhood kids were home and, and available to play. So. Um, once I got into a rhythm with my beat, because I found I started off beating a bit too hard, and then once I got into a beat rhythm, it was it was just a really lovely uh, weave structure. So this is 12, and you can see that in the middle on the broken, and then on the point 12, this is one of my most favorite fabrics. Uh, the point 12 came out just absolutely beautiful, and I, I don't love red and green together. It's one of my least favorite combinations. I think it's because my mother, she hates red and green together. But I have to admit, this just screams Christmas. I mean, how can it not, right? Like it just, yeah, I mean, really. Uh, but it's not Christmas time yet. We haven't even had a Halloween or Thanksgiving. Because in Canada, of course, Thanksgiving is in two weekends. And then this was, what was this one? Um, oh, now I'm forgetting. This is... The next one, oh, I remember, I did my uh, twills twice because uh, I was playing with the beat. Um, and then this is reverse, two two twill reverse. And then you go into broken twill, which is one of my absolute most favorite weave structures. I just love broken twill. I don't know why, I just like it. Um, this is extended reverse, which is another one of my favorites because of this over here. I just love that. And then um, three one twill, which again, you've got these huge weft picks, going, weft skips going across, right? Because they're jumping such a big distances. But look at the fabric over here. Like how interesting is that? It just looks awesome. And then you go into, can't remember what this one is. If anybody knows, it's 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 a three one reverse. That's right, three one reverse. I can see it better on the monitor than I can on here because on the monitor, the because of the camera, you can actually see the pattern. Uh, whereas here, I'm like really up close and it's a little bit harder. This is three one twelve. This is one three twelve, which I thought was really pretty on this. It's so subtle over here, isn't that subtle? So pretty. Very, very subtle, the point weave, the point 12. This was one of my absolute most favorites, this one here. Um, this one is one three extended. And this was one of the most surprising for me. I just love this one, isn't that gorgeous? And then the last two, I've made a hot mess of this. <laughs> Let me just fold it back up because it is still a wee, just ever so slightly damp. The twills are just, um, oh, the twills are, they're just awesome. They, they are such a, I can see why people spend the majority of their weaving career just playing with the twills and playing with color in twill. Um, it just, the point twill, it, it, it just, oh, I, yeah. What, I mean, what, what more is there to say, right? Like, it's just awesome. Um, this is, one three extended. Um, so what I liked about this was just these little like pops of color. So again, you kind of got that Christmassy kind of effect, but just pops of it instead. And actually this would look really neat if it was white, if the, you weren't allowed to use black or white, but if this was uh, white in behind, that would be really neat. And then this is the uh, two two twelve stripe, which again creates a really interesting pattern because over here, um, in your point twill, if you've got that green, but 
I used fawn as the second color because that's what I had for bobbins left over. And um, again, you've just got this really, really interesting uh, pattern. And same over here in your two two twill, because you've got you're weaving one pick of each color. Um, you know, just really, really pretty. So that is the progress so far on my OHS um, weaver. And I'm just going to switch the cameras for a minute while I talk about some of the things. So just so you guys have some pretty things to look at. Um, there's a few sort of reflections that I have now that I'm sort of a third of the way through the unit that I think is just important to sort of think about. First, this is an incredible amount of time. Um, you're, you're looking at many, many hours at the loom. In total, I have probably spent about somewhere between 12 and 18 hours on, I'd probably say more like 18 hours on this thus far between warping um, getting the loom up and running and then um, actually weaving time. So take that into consideration. And then the other thing is this was me cutting off the warp this yesterday because I ran out of warp. So I have done all of my samples, but I haven't done my original samples yet. So you have to do a an original color effect, an original texture effect, and an original pattern effect. And you do that all on this warp, this primaries warp with your red, yellow, and blue and I have run out of warp so I actually have to make another warp and rewarp and this was a warp of seven yards um, and so if I were to do this again I would definitely warp up more like nine so a little word to the wise because I need to throw on another warp of about two or three yards um, so that I can finish off these last three samples it's not a lot of weaving and distance like you're only weaving about 10 to 15 inches for each sample but the thing is is that you're submitting about eight seven or eight inches of that sample um, but you need to uh, have enough room to play and because this is a singles and because this yarn is actually quite loosely spun talking about loose spun yarns earlier um, it one of my warp threads broke and because of having to tie like fix the the warp it messed up that area of the uh, warp and I just ended up advancing just to get past it. It was only about half a yard But it was just enough to lose that that little bit more warp and then you're also re-slaying and re-tying on So you need to factor that in as well So just some little tips and pointers as you're working your way through this one thing I will say is your drawdowns um, They take quite a long time to do so definitely get those done if you can and oh no, Dorothy, I cut the warp. That's right. No, no, I didn't reslay without cutting it. So you, what I mean is like because you have to reslay, you're cutting off the warp, and then you have to reslay. So you have to take into account that that lost yardage at the front, right? Because I reslayed and had to retie on, so all of this was lost. Um, this was actually at the end of the warp, but just as an example. Um, and then, like I said, uh, I had that that broken warp thread because of this being a singles yarn. So yeah, uh, great question, um, Dorothy, just to clarify. But um, so I lost some yardage because of those two things. Everybody has to reslay. So you do your twills or your tabby first, and then you re you cut the warp off, reslay, and uh, tie back on, and then you keep going. So. For your other one so yeah just things to think about make sure your warp is long enough and make sure that um, you've you've sort of allotted time to this because it's definitely um, labor intensive the other thing is if you are uh, going to do your unit one and you're going to do it this fall with all of us uh, Dorothy is um, on board there's a few other people Barb is uh, doing it who else is doing it uh, Erica is working on hers uh, Laura line um, I think Glenda's looking at it um, the virtual groups, uh, the first meeting is on October 7th. So Sarah Craig sent out all those emails for everybody. So we'll all be able to ask Yetta those questions, which is fantastic. So anybody it, start writing down all of your questions about what you are wondering about as you come up against things, because you don't want to be working on something. Uh, this is what's kind of happened to me is I was working on stuff and then I found that I got stuck and um, I didn't have anybody to ask. So, cause our virtual group hasn't started yet. So thankfully Lisa and I are friends and I was able to text her and so that I could keep going. The reason for getting going on this earlier um, is because um, I'm gonna be away quite a bit this fall. We're away at Thanksgiving and then we're, I'm away again and then um, I'm supposed to be away for the Remembrance Day long weekend. So it cuts into my weekends quite a bit. So, uh, oh yeah, Leanne and Amanda, of, of course. So 
yeah, just things to think about, time commitment, making sure your warp is long enough, and uh, keep really, 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 really accurate notes as you go, because you need to know all of your measurements on loom and off loom, and then also post finishing. So you need to make sure that you're, you're writing things down as you go. Um, some people use um, like iPads, take a photo, use a pen to write everything down and then you can transcribe it later. Um, I had it in a Word document that I was using and I'm going to put that into Google Docs so that I can work on it from anywhere on any device. Um, yeah, lots of ideas. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, it's a lot to think about. It's a big undertaking and there's 18 units. I know, I think it's Loreline and Dorothy are hoping to do their tapestry um, relatively quickly because they've kind of done this deep dive into tapestry. So you don't have to do your units in order. You can skip around as well. So yeah, hopefully that, uh, and if there's any questions, don't hesitate to ask. All right, let's go into community participation. Oh, I was going to mention really quickly, my, uh, my um, uh, Lunenburg um, pullover is sitting behind us here. You guys will notice I haven't made any progress on it. Partly it's because of my hands, because my thumbs, I seem to have a thumbs week. Um, this is a pattern by Amy Christophers, Christophers, however you say her name. This is uh, Dominion Fleece and Fiber North County Cheviot yarn. It was naturally dyed in indigos, marigold, and madder. And actually, I'm not sure, I don't think, did I see Kelly in the chat today? Because it's Kelly's, Kelly's yarn. Yes, she's there. Um, oh no, still waiting on the first frost that'll kill everything in her garden. Hopefully the first frost, Kelly, will happen in, a, in several weeks from now. So what ended up happening with this is I finished the body up till the ribbing, mostly actually because I had to wind more yarn. So I finished the body up until and I just needed to do to do the ribbing at the bottom. And I put I put the uh, try it on tubing that Charlotte had sent me I put it on try it on tubing because I really before I went any further, I wanted to make sure that I that I was happy with it. So this is one skein of the of this gorgeous uh, blue, kind of tealy dark blue. And then this is another skein, two or three more skeins. I think it's three skeins in total. So I have two more skeins left. I've got my sleeves to do. So I was gonna do my sleeves next and then come back and do the ribbing. However, I put it on the try it on tubing to see what I thought because I was looking at it and I was like, this is really baggy, like really baggy. And so sure enough, I put it on my dress form. After you separate from the yoke to the body, um, you cast on about 10 stitches, which is all of that in there. And it's about an added just over two inches of, of body ease, um, of body stitches. So it's all of this out here. And then it's the same on the other side. So it's ended up being about four it's probably actually more like eight inches, but it's definitely four inches too big. Um, my concern is the sleeves, that if I take this all out, that it's gonna end up, the sleeves are gonna end up being a bit too tight. So I was thinking about, um, so the, the long and the short of it is I have to rip this all out and redo it and take all of these underarm stitches out because I can tell you right now, I will not wear it if it's this big. I put it on my body and it's actually not so bad from the front, it's the back. It is so big. Um, it's just like, this has gotta be, um, you know, 15 inches of positive ease. Like this, here, let me turn it and then you guys can see. I, I showed Mike as well and he was like, oh dear. <laughs> so that is all of that. Like I can't even stretch my thumb <laughs> that much distance. Multiplied by two, cause it's on the other side too, right? This is folded fabric. So <laughs> I have to rip this all out. So I'm actually just gonna save it. It's gonna go on hold for now. Um, I, I'm gonna save it for Thanksgiving. Um, I'll take it, we've got a four hour drive where we're going and I'll work on it on the way up and I'll work on it on the way back. But kind of a bummer. It was just being away and not being able to um, try it on. It happens. I should have known, but uh, say lovey. Yeah, it's quite a bit of extra fabric, Kelly. So it's one of those things where I didn't think it was as much as it was until I started, like, until I actually put it on my dress form. And then I was like, oh, sweet mother of pearl. <laughs> this is not going to work. So yeah, uh, I am doing, Linda says I am doing each, oh, you're, this is so, I have a scarf on my table loom. Oh good, so you've got some stuff going on your, that you're weaving on Linda as well, that's wonderful. 
Colors are stunning. Thank you so much, Allison. Also, welcome back to Allison. They've been traveling um, and RVing um, for the last um, nine months, I think, and now they, they've decided to settle in, in Wisconsin. So welcome back to Allison. They're no longer on the road. Um, let's see I uh, such a lovely pattern thank you Holly um, the I have to admit Amy's pattern savory knitting if you look her up online she's one of my absolute most favorite designers um, I always love her patterns and actually I own most of her old patterns like uh, before she started working for Barocco and there's two that I own that I actually haven't made yet one of them is white pine and the other one is uh, palm de pin so I would like to get to those sweaters eventually just beautiful. My first time seeing it. Love it. Thank you, Rebecca. That's very kind. No, I'm not, I'm not going to donate this sweater. <laughs> um, Mary says you can finish it and give it to a friend. No, um, the, I, I love this yarn too much. Um, I, uh, and it's too late to put the sleeve to put waist shaping in because I'm, I'm below there. If I had known, I still think I see that. Th so this is one of the, the tricky things. Number one, I don't mind ripping out so that's not a big deal. Number two, um, because I'm, I don't have extra yarn for this project. So I don't want to waste a whole bunch of yarn in the body if I don't need it in the body, because it means two things. Number one, the sleeves can be the length that I want them to be, which is full length. And number two, I can lengthen the body, which I always do. So it's worth it to make these changes when there's this much extra yarn in the fabric um, to get the sweater that you want I know it seems like a lot of knitting but like in six months or nine months I won't even remember you know I'm waiting at soccer practice regardless so that's why to me it's worth it all right so we are finishing up spindle spun summer so let's talk about our August giveaway because I, I kept forgetting to um, announce the winner for that. So actually, so the fiber pack that has the alpaca in it, and it's got some blends in it, is actually going to be going out to Judy, who's Creek Crafter on Ravelry. So congratulations, Judy, if you could send me your mailing address in Ontario, and I'll send that out in the mail for you. For September, um, so James wrecked these. He felt really, really, really badly afterwards because he's just been he's just been awesome this fall. We were having so many problems last year with school and the influence of the other boys. And this year he's like a new kid. Everybody has commented on it. Um, we made these on the wool circle a few weeks ago and, uh, we, cause we were talking about blending boards and whatnot. And he came by later and he kind of pulled them apart and he felt really, really badly. And he didn't realize, and he was just talking to me and playing with them and he was pulling them apart. So I was going to spin these anyways, but these will be, but so now him and I are going to make some, some more. So these are going, we're going to do several packs of these. These have microfiber in them, some Coriadale, a little bit of Perindale, some sparkle. They're so beautiful. Um, so he is going to make some more with me. And so for September, I'll be sending out some of these if you want that colorway, or you can pick my favorite color which is this gorgeous yellow okra color. So you can pick your color for September and these will also make, and these also have sparkle in them. They've got some wool silk in here, some sparkle, really, and some, I think they have sari silk. They've got thread. There's just a, a variety of things. I didn't weigh any of it when we were doing the demo on the wool circle. So um, we'll, him and I'll just make them and, and that'll kind of be it. But, um, uh, I'm going to do up several sets of all of them for um, uh, both spindle spun summer giveaways and then also for September, probably October and, and, and uh, so sort of giveaways for the rest of the rest of the year. So, oh, wonderful. Judy, you're here. That's awesome. I thought you were here. I thought it, I thought I saw you. So that's great. So let's talk about spindle spun summer, which has come to an end. So I'm sorry that we won't be spent sharing more of these photos. Um, we'll do, we'll do a uh, giveaway announcements probably next week. Uh, just cause I want to get that, get that sort of, um, done. This is from Mary. Um, this week I had a fail and a win. I guess it is best to start with the failure. I applied the cotton I'd been spinning on supported spindles and it was so frustrating. It kept breaking off as I applied and I'm glad I stopped and applied the little amount that I had spun because now I know I am not putting enough twist into my singles. 
um, back to honing my technique. I think that's one of those things when we're working with new to us fibers or fibers we haven't worked with for a while. I, I, I liked that Mary Jo sort of stopped and plied to see what she was coming up with and, and realized right away that she needed to make some changes. So now for her success story, after losing at the Cotton Wars, I decided to spin some multicolored nests of fiber on my new Tibetan spindle. Now I have been practicing on supported spindles for a few weeks and it has been a bit slow, park and draft, park and draft, but it's not a problem. I am making usable yarn even if it isn't the most consistent. I'm having fun and learning. And by Thursday afternoon, I was spinning while distracted watching YouTube when I looked at my fingers and realized I was drafting and the spindle was still spinning. Isn't that amazing? Big wins, Mary Jo. And she has been so, um, she has been sharing so much and spins mostly on spindles. Um, it's just been such a pleasure to share Mary Jo's work with you guys. And these little, these little guys that she's been doing the, co the cotton on, oh, they're so pretty. So thank you, Mary Jo. This is from Alex, um, Alex C. We've got a couple of Alexes actually in the community. I had a bit of FOMO with all the support spindles talk, so I decided to give it a go. It's so fun and like learning anything new the first few times, I swear I was all thumbs. I totally get it, Alex. Absolutely, I love that bright green. This is from Diana. This yarn surprised me. It was created from dozens of odds and bits that I've collected over time. In a burst of curiosity uh, about what would happen and tidiness, I was sick of random collections of dyed rovings and blending experiences. <laughs> I hear ya. I tossed it all through the drum carter. I blended and blended it until it was a uniform blend and then at the end added sari silk. And you can see the sari silk through that yarn. Isn't that just gorgeous? Uh, it would have been considered waste, but it's turned into a good looking yarn if I do say so myself. So pretty. This is from Lulu. These are so pretty. Here is her first spindle spun summer and zero to hero. Um, also her very first hand spun. Isn't that fantastic? Um, is all Shetland. The moorit is from commercially prepared roving and the colors are from hand dyed braids. It was fun getting to know my Bosworth and Texas jeans drop spindles. My yardage is way too low for the competition. It doesn't matter, Lulu, please submit it anyways. It was about 1200 yards of total spindle spinning. That's that's very significant, but I just had to cast on the project as soon as I had the yarn that I needed. Um, now I just need some chilly weather. Isn't that a pretty pattern? So fun. Um, Kelly, uh, you've made palm de pin and she wears it all the time. That's good to hear because it's actually hard to see with palm de pin. This is one of Amy Christopher's patterns, Christopher's patterns. Um, it's hard to see from the photos, like how it sits and how it wears. So um, if you have a photo on your Ravelry Projects page, I'll, I'll go have a look. Yeah. Brooklyn says she likes the gorgeous yellow. <laughs> That's awesome, Kelly. Oh, that's hilarious, Rebecca. So every time I say the word Diana, Rebecca's three-year-old thinks that I'm talking to her. <laughs> mitts are amazing. Well done, Lulu. Those mitts are amazing. Love Lulu's project. Interesting, the fleece I just finished washing is named Lulu. That's so cool. This is from Christine. Finished her spindle spun summer. Total yardage was 8,678 8, meters or 9,491 yards. The singles were 6,228 uh, meters. So in her total yardage, she's, she's included that, but isn't that incredible? It's fantastic. Really well done, Christine. Beautiful. I love these, these sort of finished photos. That, that was one of the, my favorite parts about uh, uh, spin together. This is from Megan. She got them all done. So we talked about it last week and she got them done. So this is Megan, 44 minis, 770 yards each, um, all and, uh, sorry, 44 minis, 70 yards each. Uh, they were all two plies. So she multiplies the yardage by three for a total of 9,240 yards. And on what is waiting to be plied, she only has one more left to go. So a grand total of 9,380 yards. So proud of myself and never realized how much one can get done by spinning just 10 grams a day. Isn't that incredible? Unbelievable. I can't wait to see what Megan does with this. 
This is from Antonia. Um, Antonia's total yardage was 11,045 meters or 1,252 yards approximately. Uh, spindles used, she used two of her Turkish spindles and two top whirl spindles for plying. I had asked you guys in your finished yardage to include uh, what spindles you used, just more for interest than anything. Uh, amazing spinning, Christine. Uh, wow, the yardage. Lots of gorgeous yarn. Congratulations. Megan, great work. You guys are so encouraging. This is from Ruth. For 7,084 yards of spinning uh, post finishing for a total of seven, 1,771 yards of three ply spun and plied on a Schneider 13 gram spindle. Beautiful. And she's already started knitting. Fantastic. All right, moving on to Zero to Hero. This is uh, moving from Zero to Hero goes on all year. We restart every year in January. It's an opportunity to go from fiber to uh, some sort of a garment or a finished project. It can be knit, woven, or sorry, to finish yarn to a finished garment, knit, woven, whatever. It's a finished sort of object. Um, so this can be a sweater spin. It can be something wo weaving for yardage. There's lots of different things that you can, you can do. Um, so this is from Iris, her shawlography, which was the West Knits Make, Make Her Cowl in 2021 project is finished. She had a hard time deciding on what and how to spin this. She first spun a couple of bats of carded fin, long draw two ply. They look wonderful, but ended up being uh, at least sport, if not DK. Anyone who has knitted West Knits shawls know that with DK yarn, they will be huge blankets. So I changed to my original plan and spun singles intentionally for the first time in my spinning career. That's amazing, Iris. They are not the most consistent. I don't know. They look pretty amazing to me. Uh, but not boa eating mouse style either. <laughs> I've never heard that before. The purple is merino, white and pink are merino silk. The pink got dyed after spinning. The darker gray is spun from a wool silk top. Isn't that beautiful? Now I'm just waiting for October and the MCAL to start and to finish my first bigger Zero to Hero project. You guys are making so much this year. Last year, uh, when we were really like in the crux of sort of 2020 and, and everything that 2020 brought, people, I couldn't believe the amount that people were making and that was part of the reason for starting community participation and doing this segment of the podcast. But if 2020 was an indication of what would come in 2021, if anything, I thought that it would kind of go down a bit because people would work on stuff for longer. Um, they'd be kind of, you know, back to being out and commuting and all those different things that kind of came to a grinding halt in 2020. And if anything, it's been the opposite. <laughs> you, if anything, it like lit a fire and people are like, just like this um, on, their, um, on their making. It's just amazing. This is from Megan. Uh, Megan, uh, I'm hoping this is the right place. Absolutely, Megan, you had shared this under Zero to Hero and uh, that's absolutely the right place to share. So this is her first big project made from her own hand spun yarn. Um, this is her night shift shawl. So this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry for those who aren't familiar with it. I used fiber from a local dyer's fiber subscription. Each month is inspired by Canadian songbirds. So anything birds, you had me at bird. Like I just... Me and the kids are bird crazy. I just love this so much. So these are all the different birds. So fibers from left to right. The purple is finch. Uh, purple finch, sorry, is the Polworth. Um, Whiskey Jack is Coriadale. The red-breasted beak is a Targi Bamboo Tussa Silk Blend. The red-breasted Nuthatch is Coriadale. Ruby-throated Hummingbird, which is one of my favorite birds, is a Targi Bamboo Tussa Silk Blend. The Eastern Bluebird um, is a Polworth. The American Golden Finch, which is another one of my favorite birds, is Coriadale. So the Canadian songbirds inspired each fiber spun up. Isn't that amazing? I love this so much. And guess which yarn is my favorite? <laughs> beautiful shawl, Megan, what a beautiful shawl. What a great idea to do for a subscription box. I totally agree. And I kind of, kind of want it. <laughs> this last one is from Claudia. Here's what I spun this summer for Tour de Fleece. I bought the Lavender Field set from Ingle Nook Fibers in Targi Bamboo Silk. I spun it into a luscious two-ply, half on my wheel, half on my support spindles, and it turned out to a worsted weight. I wanted to find the perfect pattern for it, and I just couldn't 
couldn't and I just couldn't until I learned the news that my sister had cancer and would have to go through chemo. So I searched for a simple but fun shawl that would make her feel cozy and warm during these difficult months. And Claudia, we're holding your family in our prayers. The dotted rays by Stephen West was just the perfect fit. Isn't this incredible? I'm in love with the results and I also wanted to keep it for myself, but seeing my sister wrap herself in it was pure joy. Crafting is so much more than the item that results in it. It's all the love and care we put into every single strand and stitch and hope my sister can feel that every time she puts it on. Which is just an absolutely beautiful and wonderful way to end the podcast today. So thank you so much for being here, everybody. Thank you for listening to me ramble at the beginning of the show and for sticking with me till the end. Um, there was a lot that went on this week uh, and I just really appreciate you guys being here. So until next weekend, have a wonderful week. I hope it's full of wooly goodness. We've got queries and explorations uh, coming up at 10 a.m. So in an, just under an hour from now. And uh, so if you're part of that group, I look forward to seeing you guys then. And until next time, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy weaving, happy dreaming. Bye, everyone.